Life Audio. Hi, this is Bonnie Gray, and I'm your host for Breathe, the Stressless Podcast. I'm so happy that you're here. This is a podcast that's just for you, so you can breathe and have a moment to just rest and refresh, draw closer to God's love, and hear an inspiring story, receive a soul care tip, a practical, easy action you can take to return calm to your soul, your body, and your emotions, and experience God's peace and presence. And then we'll end with a soothing, prayer to send you off into your day, or if you're listening at night, just to have a soft place to land. I'm the author of Sweet Like Jasmine, Finding Identity in a Culture of Loneliness and Whispers of Rest, a 40-day journey of experiencing God's love with soul care and tips to help you restore your calm, and Finding Spiritual White Space, a book about creating space to rest. I'm really passionate about this topic of wellness and God's word because I had healed from anxiety and panic attacks and even depression at an earlier journey in my life. And I can see God is using it in my parenting because what I've received, I'm offering to my children now to help them to stress less. Children right now are experiencing a high level of anxiety and stress like never before. We're all going through this crazy thing called the pandemic, and children have been put under so many changes. Studies have shown that people that have been surveyed, one out of three people say they are experiencing loneliness, and that includes our children. A lot of the ways that they used to relate to their friends and their community, it's just changed. And under a long period of time, they're under so much pressure in having new ways to have to learn, going through distance learning. And they are also hearing about all the different news that are constantly shifting and changing. So we have an opportunity to show them God's love. I love this word stored gay because it has one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. It's from Romans 12, 10, and it's our anchoring scripture for this week. And I want to read it to you now. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another with affection. One translation tells us. It's so beautiful because in our devotion to one another, we want to nurture an affection, that emotional bond we share with our children. One of the things that can really heal loneliness. And I'm going to give these soul care tips to you today, um, more than one today, just so to get your creative juices flowing. Because kids, you know, one thing that might have worked in one season of their lives, it may not work in another. So we got to keep being creative and give ourselves permission to know that it's okay, that we're also learning what gives us comfort as we know, also changes. So we want to be able to be that companion to our kids and let them know that we'll learn together. And in fact, that's a very, very encouraging way that we can give to our children words just to say, you know, I am just learning right alongside you. We're learning together how to de-stress and experience more peace. One of the first things that we talked about in the series on friendship in Philia in episode 17 is that we were talking about the importance of having time to have conversation. And that's one of the first things that we want to be able to develop with our kids. I have two boys, they're teenagers, 13 and 16. And even at a very young age, there are certain practices that I had introduced to them because they helped me to stress less. And as a result, I was able to include them on my journey to learn how to stress less and give that to them. Well, one of the things in being able to promote conversation between both of us is touch. We talked about that in our last podcast on romantic love, Eros. Touch, giving hugs we learned, really provides not just 
comfort for the person who's receiving it, but it also helps give health benefits to the person who's giving the hugs. El 9 de junio. Los humanos y los dinosaurios no pueden coexistir. No te pierdas en fines el épico final de la era Jurassic. Hemos generado un desastre ecológico. Lo que importa es lo que hagamos ahora. Jurassic World Dominion. ¿Por qué siempre tienen que ser más grandes? 9 de junio exclusivamente en fines. Es fácil desafiar a los demás, pero hacerlo con uno mismo cuesta. Hay que ser capaz de olvidar todo lo que has aprendido, lo que ya has conseguido y reinventarte hasta dar con algo genuino. Puede que sea un riesgo o puede que sea el único camino. Nuevo Nissan Qashqai. Inventamos el crossover y ahora lo reinventamos. I read a very interesting story and it's actually a true story. Earlier at the turn of the century, um, there was a situation where half the infants died in their first year of life. And it was very strange until the 1920s, there was a doctor, a New York pediatrician, who noted that infants were kept in a sterile, neat, tidy wards, infant wards, but they were rarely picked up. And so he started to have women brought in to come and hold the babies, to coo to them, to stroke them. And guess what? The mortality rate dropped drastically. So, you know, our skin, it is the biggest organ in our body. It's so interesting the way God made our bodies. More than half a million sensory fibers flow from the skin through the spinal cord to the brain. As a sensory system, it is the most important organ of the body. And it's universal, isn't it? This longing to be touched. It doesn't end when we're children. But interestingly enough, it seems that most parents stopped hugging or touching their children as much when they turned five, kind of like when they start going to school. And so I just want to encourage us to give hugs to our children. They need it without even saying a word. This communication doesn't require any words verbal. And it's just easy for us to just open our arms when we see they're frustrated and maybe their attitudes are not the best. Before we give instruction and correction, it's called the comfort circle. And I got this idea from Mylan and Kay Yurkovich's book, How We Love. The comfort circle points us to first offer comfort before we give instruction or correction or even solving problems. You know the part of the brain that solves problems? It's also the part of the brain that worries and obsesses over things we just can't seem to stop worrying about. And it could get us into a bad mood. Well, even so for, even more so for teenagers or for kids. So we want to stop that obsession over worries that creates that bad mood and we interrupt it by giving a hug. What's interesting about this hug is that, like I said, it helps the mental health of the person giving the hugs because it releases happy hormones as you reach out to give that hug. So both us as parents and for the child, we both have that break. So we can just say, you know what? It looks like you're having a really tough day or a really hard moment. Here, come, let me give you a hug. Now that hug sometimes is not welcome, okay? Sometimes it is, and that's great. That provides a relief. Sometimes it's not welcome, especially if they're in the moment, right? Of something difficult. Well, one way we can help our child is to give them comfort. Comfort is a very important gift we can give our children. We find in scripture, God says, that the God of comfort comforts us so that in our times of trouble, when others have trouble, we can comfort them with the comfort we have received. Now, the sequence is that we receive that comfort first. So we need to find an opportunity to give our kids that comfort. Now, if their love language is words, words is a way for comfort. We can get to the practice of writing a note. 
we talked about how writing a card also involves the touch sensory. We talked about how writing letters also helps the person who's writing it feel joy by remembering the relationship and the love relationship and thinking on the positive attributes of the person that we're writing to. Well, it also helps the person receiving it. Words of affirmation are very powerful. Words of affirmation are very healing. So write your child a note. That's a practice that we do in our family. So in our family, I like to say that we want to give hugs three times a day, just like we have to eat fruit. We strive for three times a day, three servings, vitamins to help our immunity, help our bodies. Well, we also want to help our spirits so we don't get discouraged. We need three hugs a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. So how often are you hugging your child? Second is the word of affirmation. Sometimes when we get into those uh, conversations that are difficult, we want to invest in their emotional bank account, right? We want to be able to have credit in that emotional bank account that we have with our children. Writing a self-affirmation note. We all know that saying simply, I'm fine, doesn't help us. God wants us to be honest, but did you know that agreeing with how God sees us when we tell ourselves the truth about our values and strength, it replenishes the spark in us? Research shows that when people spontaneously reflect on their strengths during the day, even when they're chronically stressed to begin with, these self-affirmations offset the negative effects of stress and act as a buffer People actually experience a boost in energy and creativity, solving problems more easily than if they didn't say them. Studies show that you can feel more hopeful, happier, and optimistic, and less sad and angry by writing down your strengths and what is important to you. Well, as parents, our kids don't really have that voice. You know, when they go through difficulties at school, whether it's with friends or school, academics or homework or whatever it is in sports, they don't have those words. And so we need to give those words to them. So here is a prompt to begin your letter, your note to your child. Dear so-and-so, what I love about you is the way you, and then share an aspect of their personality that you like. The second, you can say the things you value, I notice are, and then it helps them to know that you notice what's important to them, the things they value. And third, I love seeing you do X, Y, or Z. Now, remind them of the things that give them peace or joy. I love it when you are able to, you know, run and play a great practice in soccer I love it when I see you just getting lost, playing with the clay or playing music, whatever it is that you love seeing them do and getting lost in and remind them of that flow. So that's words of affirmation. That's the second soul care. The third is spending time together. And so play is so important because when those emotions are just like frustration or anxiety, or worry, spending time together, and not just talking about the problem. Again, we we don't want to trigger the fight or flight response in our child, which is stressful, problem solving. We want to help them by spending time together and doing things that can bring them joy and bring them peace. Sometimes we can hesitate to do that because we might think, well, Since there are so many worries, um, I feel like it's hard for us to unplug and just go have fun. But I like actually this verse in Ephesians 5a. It says, putting off the old and putting on the new and renewing our mind with the right attitude. But it's interesting that the way to do that, to change our attitude and change our minds, is that we have to not only put off the old, which is correction, we need to put on the new. We need some experience. We need to take our children out of the world of stress and into a new experience. 
So what is it that brings life? What is it that they enjoy doing? What is their world of play? We want to enter into that world with them. So I call it side-by-side play, whatever that is. One of the things that um, we love to do is to go hiking. Now, this is something that brings me joy. So we can bring our children into our world. And studies show that the minute we are outside, 10 minutes, even if our emotions do not feel like it, when we walk outside together, those endorphins and the dopamine, those happy hormones will start being released and our bodies will feel better after 10 minutes. So many times my kids, they're just not feeling so great. And I say, let's go for a walk. Even if they don't feel like it, I will just say, I know, I know it doesn't feel good and you don't feel like it, but just walk with me and it's just 10 minutes. Let's go. And even with all the resistance, 10 minutes later, we're walking and everybody feels better and we return. Now that's my world. I like to take them out, but what is their world? We want to join them in. This is the side-by-side type of connection that develops and nurtures that affection. What is it that your child enjoys doing? How can you join in their world of play? One thing my son had um, enjoyed was uh, skateboarding. I'd never skateboarded before and I knew I wouldn't be great at it, but I said, hey, I would love for you to show me how to skateboard. And it wasn't really so much the actual you know, results of the skateboarding, but it was really just spending time asking him questions and getting him to just talk about the stuff that he loves. And through spending that time together, there is that bond, there is that nurture. So we want to say, I love you, not only with our words, but also with our actions. Because especially for teenagers, love is a verb. Love is action. And so this is such an important concept that, um, you know, we want to put into action. When I was a missionary in Hong Kong in my 20s, and I was working with delinquent youths, um, they had an opportunity to choose either to go to juvie hall or you want to go to camp. And so we took them out of their environment and put them in a new environment. And so creating new experiences and creating new memories is a way we built trust. You know, at the beginning, of course, the walls are up. They don't even look at you. They don't want to be around you. But, you know, when we spend more time, we take them out of their element and do something fun together, they will experience learning to trust. And that's the same way with our children. You know, they may not be in the best of moods, but if we take them out of the uh, their element and we go help, you know, them to experience new experiences, then there is that bond, there is that novelty, and it also releases those good hormones that I talked about earlier in the podcast about new experiences, bond families together, and bring our children closer to us. There is a beautiful verse that I love in Isaiah 62, 4, 5. But you will be named delight, for the Lord delights in you. No longer will you be desolate but you will be called my delight. We want our children to experience that delight because school will tell them there's something maybe broken about them. Maybe there are relationships that are making them feel like they're less than. And even our expectations at times, it'll give them pressure. But if we take them out of that, we want to say, hey, I want to spend time with you. I just want you to know that you're a delight to be with. I like you. I don't just love you. And that means spending one-on-one time with them. When they were little, we used to call it mommy and me dates or daddy and me dates, but they're older now. We just say, hey, let's just hang out. We want to spend one-on-one time with you, intentional time with them. We can take them to, uh, you know, out for burgers or maybe something simple like yogurt or go for a smoothie run, whatever it is or maybe something more adventure in nearby museum. A lot of times we might mentor children in a mentorship program, and it seems like we have that passion to mentor, um, you know, be part of those ministries, and that's wonderful. But let's remember our children long for that same type of intentional time and interest 
and to show them new things and doing new things. The last soul care practice is um, to get kids out of worrying and stress is to do something with their hands. And this is a great opportunity where if there's something that you know, you could pass on that hobby to them. It could be simple as cooking. It'd be simple um, as making something. What is it that's your craft? Share that joy with them. And it could be something like going to pick um, fruit for the little ones, if you have younger children. If you have older children, you can think of things you can do together that are new. Maybe rent bikes and go to a location where you can do some things with renting bikes or go to a ropes course. For my boys, that's something we did recently. We just drove over to somewhere where there's a ropes course and we did it and we had fun on zip lining. So create new memories together where they can also see that you're really fun to be with because you enjoy delighting in them. Es fácil desafiar a los demás, pero hacerlo con uno mismo cuesta. Hay que ser capaz de olvidar todo lo que has aprendido, lo que ya has conseguido y reinventarte hasta dar con algo genuino. Puede que sea un riesgo o puede que sea el único camino. Nuevo Nissan Qashqai. Inventamos el crossover y ahora lo reinventamos. Es fácil desafiar a los demás, pero hacerlo con uno mismo cuesta. Hay que ser capaz de olvidar todo lo que has aprendido, lo que ya has conseguido y reinventarte hasta dar con algo genuino. Puede que sea un riesgo o puede que sea el único camino. Nuevo Nissan Qashqai. Inventamos el crossover y ahora lo reinventamos. Well, I hope that this has started your juices flowing. This is a whole rich series that we could just spend a lot of time on and a lot of shows on because, you know, children are experience high levels of anxiety, but we have God's love. We have stored gay love. We have the ability to nurture affection and then reduce the amount of stress that they go through and we'll guide them. The more we can get filled up, the more we'll be able to give out. So remember to prioritize your well-being because the more you receive, the more you can flow out. I hope you've enjoyed this time. Invite your friends to listen to the series and follow me on Instagram as I share more words of affirmation and to remind you of the soul care challenges because we all need encouragement. I am also here for you through my newsletter, Breathe Newsletter. I share the links to these studies with you. Sign up at thebonniegray.com slash breathe. thebonniegray.com slash breathe. Well, remember you are loved and you are cherished. Just rest. We'll see you next time. We'll be exploring first love with God. Agape, God's unconditional love. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Breathe, the Stress Less Podcast, a production of lifeaudio.com and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. To learn more about Bonnie Gray or to check out any of the resources she mentioned in this episode, just head over to her website, thebonniegray.com, or check out our show notes. This episode was produced by me, Kelly Givens, and edited by Stephen Sanders. A special thanks to our executive producer, Stephen McGarvey. For more Faith Toolkit podcasts, head over to lifeaudio.com. Es fácil desafiar a los demás, pero hacerlo con uno mismo cuesta. Hay que ser capaz de olvidar todo lo que has aprendido, lo que ya has conseguido, y reinventarte hasta dar con algo genuino. Puede que sea un riesgo, o puede que sea el único camino. Nuevo Nissan Qashqai. Inventamos el crossover y ahora lo reinventamos. Es fácil desafiar a los demás, pero hacerlo con uno mismo cuesta. Hay que ser capaz de olvidar todo lo que has aprendido, lo que ya has conseguido y reinventarte hasta dar con algo genuino. Puede que sea un riesgo o puede que sea el único camino. Nuevo Nissan Qashqai. Inventamos el crossover y ahora lo reinventamos.